So I ran across these two asset packs on itch. And I thought they'd be great for a series on how to make a tower defense game. I don't really have too much of a plan, but I want to take everything that's in these asset packs and just see what happens. I'll build up a game from scratch, slowly add in features over time, maybe depending on what you all want to see. And by the end of it, have a complete tower defense game with all of the works. So the first step here is just to download everything. I'll put the links to the asset packs in the description so that you can download them yourselves. But you'll get two zip files for each pack with tons of sprites in them. Then I'm starting with an empty game maker project. And the goal for this video is to just draw a sample map, something like this in that isometric style. If we're gonna draw that, we obviously need a sprite to work with. I'm gonna make a terrain group. And then I'm gonna pull up one of these asset packs. I'll do the tower defense pack and I'm gonna grab the grass sprite out of it. It's under landscape tiles. You can just drag that right into Game Maker. Once it's in there, you'll see, creates a new sprite for us, gives it that default name of grass. Looks good. Just gonna rename that to grass sprite. Next, I wanna just play around in the room editor and see, you know, kind of what we are going to be drawing. I'm just gonna drag a few of these grass sprites in here and kind of mess around and see what it might potentially look like. That gives me an idea about how this is gonna work, but because of the isometric style of the game, it's gonna make more sense to draw these in code instead of actually using the room editor. So let's clean those up. I want an object to actually draw these tiles. So I'm gonna make a new object and call it map controller. It can be anything really though. And then I'm gonna give it a new create event and in there, write up a skeleton function called draw map. And then I'm going to put that over in the room start event as well. So that's where it's gonna get called. So every time a new room starts up, is gonna call this draw map function and do what it says, draw a new map. We're gonna need some sort of data structure that represents what the map looks like. Um, for now, simple enough just to use an array of IDs where each ID is going to map to some sort of tile type. So you can see here, I'm just using zeros and ones for now. Zeros are gonna be nothing. So that's gonna be an empty space. And then ones are going to reference our grass tile. I will make just a constant called tile index that is going to be used to map those numbers to the actual sprites. So tile zero is going to undefined because it can draw nothing and tile one will go to the grass sprite. Then we are going to have to loop through this. So loop through every row in the map and then loop through every column in the map. That's what I'm doing with these two for loops here. And then get the actual tile sprite. I'm doing that by referencing our tile index map struct. Let's see, in the case of a sprite being undefined, we are going to do nothing. So we can just do continue, which is going to let the loop continue on. If we do have a sprite, for example, a grass sprite, we are going to need to actually draw it on the screen. So this is gonna be the tough part, is figuring out how to position these tiles so that they fit perfectly together run the game quickly just to make sure everything works looks good should be blank we weren't expecting anything now let's just add a placeholder function call here instant create depth so we know we're going to draw a tile in the middle of these loops right We just need to figure out those X and Y coordinate on where each tile is going to get placed and the depth as well. 
we know we'll need the tile width and the tile height to calculate it. I'm just getting that simply from the top section of this isometric tile. So you can see here, the width is going to be the width of that green diamond there. And the height is going to be the height of just that diamond. We're just using that to position. We don't need the bottom section for actually positioning the tiles. If you look back to when we were playing around in the room editor, you can see how this is going to work. So it's going to loop through each one of those numbers and either place nothing or it's going to place a green tile, just like this. So it's going to go zero, nothing, one green tile, zero, nothing. Then go to the next row and then to the next row again. Essentially, we were just trying to get all of these little green diamonds to match up properly. One very important thing we're going to need to do before we start drawing is move the anchor point on the sprite from the top left down to the very bottom of that green diamond. It will make it much simpler for us to position these next to each other if we're positioning based off that anchor. So this is what the calculation is going to look like. I know this is confusing looking. Pause if you need to and go through it. But what it boils down to is that those anchor points at the bottom of the diamond are each half of the width or half of the height away from each other. So in a row, they're half a tile width away. In a column, they're half a tile height away. So we're just shifting them based off of that. Then we're using the column and row index to move them further to the right or further down. Also passing in the specific sprite that our tile object is going to be using. The tile object is just an empty object called tile that you can create. Also, let's just set the depth to one for now and see what happens. Run the game. Everything's pushed up into the origin. We can't see it. So instead of that, I'm going to shift each X and Y coordinate over by 200 just to push it to the right and push it down into the center of the screen. There we go. That looks good except we still have a problem with the depth. So that tile on the top actually should be further away. So we want it to have a lower depth. So we can just use the row because the row is going to increment as we get further down. So top row should have a lower depth. We can just use negative row there and that looks good. There we go. Now that we have it rendering the way that we want to, we can just play around with the map layout here. So we were just drawing those three tiles before. We can expand it out a bit, try to draw some more tiles. So maybe add a new row, yep, and add a couple down there, run the game again. And you can see how those line up. If you just look at the ones in the map, it lines up with what's actually drawing on the screen. Experimenting with it a little bit. And I've got this layout that looks pretty good. So I'm going to copy and paste that in there. Um, except we're zoomed in a little bit too much. If you go back up and look at the X scale and Y scale variables that I set up here, which are each one, and I'm multiplying the tile width and the tile height by them, we can just adjust those to 0 0.5. And it's going to zoom everything out a bit. And that looks great. That's a really good start for this episode. I'm going to keep going with it. Let me know what you all think. Bye-bye.